Yeah, baby, we back. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ballistic Show, or should I say, the Ballistic Show Redux. I'm your talented host, Dyke Moore, a.k.a. Ballistic Ike on the mic, a.k.a. I have so many nicknames, but you probably forgot because I've been gone for seven months. I, I look at it like this. Remember when Rick and Morty started season three, and then they debuted the first episode, and then they waited a few months to bring you the next one? This is what this is. Or maybe it isn't, but we're going to go with that comparison anyway. I come to you today, a reformed man, redetermined, is that even a word, redetermined? We're going to go with that too. Redetermined to give you the best podcast. I'm telling you right now, forget everything you thought about the podcast before. This is a redux. It's a reboot, if you will, a reimagination. We're going edgier this time. We're going all the way in. I think last time we were a little bit too one note. We were too kind of in the same lane. This time we're going in all different directions. We're going to keep the political talk to the side. We're not going to bring that up. You can go to CNN, uh, Don Lemon, uh, I don't know, RT, wherever you get your news. Focus on that there. This year we're just going to talk everything else in the world. And here's an added twist. Every so often I'll bring some other people to join me. I know you get tired and bored of hearing my very distinguished voice in here. But we're going to bring some other voices. We're going to bring some of my Windy City Underground cohorts. We're going to bring in my man Raw the Reflex from the Hip Hop Pharmacy. We're going to bring in my man Rondell Jones, Black Jonas, you guys might know him. You know, we're just going to, we're going to give everybody a voice, you know, to pretty much promote their stuff. We're going to bounce off different topics. It's always good to have different points of view. And continue to share this with your friends. Grow this community. I'm sure we still have a very solid community, but let's grow it. Let's build it up. Let's turn it into a Wakanda kingdom. We got to talk about what everybody's been talking about. This Black Panther hype train, this ain't slowing down anytime soon. As I'm recording this, Black Panther has made over $900 million. That's how much it's made worldwide, over $900 million. It's about to break a billion any day now. I can just feel it. Now, obviously, all film is subjective. Not everyone likes the same thing. So there are some people out there that think... You know, this this movie's not that good. It's a little bit overhyped. I, I got to just kindly disagree with him. This was exactly what I wanted out of not only just a superhero movie, but a black superhero movie. I mean, yes, we got to bring up Blank Man. We have to bring up Meteor Man. Up, up, and away. Hancock. Shout out to Will Smith. But those weren't, those weren't the kind of superhero movie Black Panther is. Those were more kind of a joke but this one it takes its source material very seriously and it's exactly the movie you need to uplift your spirit once you're done watching this movie no matter what race you are after you're done watching this you feel good you feel like you you can do anything that being said to all of those people that was wearing dashikis during the opening weekend i'm not hating on you for doing it what i am hating on is the fact that some of you guys were wearing stuff from your fifth grade African day, and you haven't updated it since, so you're just squeezing into these little dashikis and stuff, walking to the premiere, and then you got, you know, your pants is like all the high up and everything. You know, update your style, man. Just the Black Panther name, Black Panther. It's worth, it's worth so much money now. You can pretty much put that name on anything and it will sell. You can put it on, you know, plastic cups, juice boxes, condoms. Ah, don't don't look at me like that. You know you would wear a Black Panther condom. Don't. Fellas, don't, don't look at me like that, all right? Pleasure your queen with the motions of Wakanda. I'll tell you something else. The Oscars didn't do so well this year with the ratings. I bet you if that if that show was titled, if they renamed the Oscars, Tyler Perry presents Black Panther's 90th Annual Academy Awards, I'm, I'm telling you, highest ratings you've ever seen in your life. As far as the Oscars by itself goes, it was there's nothing really much to talk about from there. You know, shout out to Jordan Peele. For his best screenplay for Get Out. Totally deserving. Shout out to all the other winners. Jimmy Kimmel did a great job as always. Not as good as last year. But you know he still delivered. Someone who had a terrible night though. Just awful. Ryan Seacrest. Uh, For those who don't know. We're not going to go too much into it. But he's another one of these people that got some allegations of sexual misconduct. More specifically from his former stylist. Now it should be noted that the E! Network did a full on investigation and they couldn't find anything on their end but that didn't stop her from staying on twitter saying that these things happened to her and no one was doing anything about it you know what's crazy though all these years people are like uh ryan seacrest i think something there's some sugar in this tank yeah now we now know that not only is he not gay he's possibly even a freak who knew 
Now, obviously, we do not know if these allegations are true or not. The only people that know is the woman in question, Seacrest, and the good Lord himself. But that didn't stop the females of the Oscar Red Carpet not talking to him at all. Not a single female, with the exception of Kelly Ripper and Taraji P. Henson, gave him the time of day. And again, these allegations are just that. They're just allegations at this point. But man, if something else come out, imagine the empire that can potentially fall. You know, Idol's, Idol's going to need a new host. Uh, new Year's Eve going to need a new host. Kelly Ripper's going to have to find another host, man. I'd hate to be Kelly Ripper in that situation. I know she hates burning that bridge with Michael Strahan. She's probably going to try to call him. He's going to be like, man, get, kiss my gap too fast. I don't need to be on that show anymore. Me and Robin Roberts of Millie Rock. But since we're on the topic of Idol, American Idol returns this Sunday on its new network, ABC. This is probably your first time hearing about this. You probably didn't even know that it got canceled. And above everything else, you're probably wondering, why is it being brought back after only two years off the air? Well, all of my OG fans know that when American Idol originally went off the air back in 2016, I think it was around April, I did a video. And one of the things I talked about was, if they're going to bring it back, they got to wait 10 years, a whole decade. Wait till people, you know, get nostalgic for it and then bring it back. They just said, forget that. There's money to be made, baby. We bringing this back. But also in that same video, I said it wouldn't surprise me if they brought it back a little bit earlier because reboots are the thing now. I'm telling you, Full House started this whole thing. Once Full House was brought back as Fuller House on Netflix and it killed the game, all these television executives were like, oh, we, we, can re we can recreate everything. We need to bring back everything. So then you started seeing Murphy Brown is being brought back. Uh, Mad About You is possibly being brought back. Will and Grace is back on NBC. All these shows. The Fresh Prince is being brought back with a female in the Will role, which if the only way I'm watching that is if y'all can get Cardi B. Tell me you would not want to see Cardi B as the Fresh Princess. It's just music to my ears, I'm telling you. And this particular story just broke last night. Nickelodeon is bringing back Blue's Clues. Who even thought about bringing that show back? First of all, that show shouldn't have ended anyway. It should have been like Sesame Street run for like years and years and years. That's a great show for preschoolers. It taught a lot of us millennials about certain topics and things that we need to know. And for all my younger viewers out there, I don't know if you've ever experienced hurt like I did in 2002. Um, <coughs> sorry. When Steve left for college. And this isn't hating on Joe. Joe, you gave us what we needed at the time. But Steve was our heart, man. Steve, we didn't care if you would ended up getting bald and old. We would have loved you just the same. Let, let's just say it's been hard for me to look at green shirts since 2002. I, I can't look at green shirts anymore. <clears throat> I, I'm good now. Uh, on that note, we're, we're going we're gonna to end this right here. Uh, sorry, I got a little emotional right there. Uh, we're going to end this first show back right here. Thank you guys for joining me. Welcome back. This is going to be, we're going to make this every week. We're just going to, we're just going to go wherever my brain takes us, which is possibly dangerous, but we're going to go there anyway. You know I can't leave without giving you guys my social media. Follow me on Twitter, at Ike Ballistic, Instagram, Ballistic Ike Moore, Facebook, Facebook.com slash The Ballistic Show. And thank you for subscribing to my YouTube and Spreaker pages. And if you haven't done it already, then I'm going to come to your house and make you do it. Until next week, I've been your talented host, Ike Moore, reminding you, as always, it's okay to be ballistic as long as it's done responsibly. I'm out! <laughs>